All righty. I'm going to finish up section 4.5. We were in objective uh, two, solving logarithmic equations. Uh, so let me give you some more examples that you would see on the homework. Uh, let's see, you would have one that looks like this. Five log six of seven W plus one plus three equals 13. In the previous problem we saw, we had log on both sides. We we're able to pretty much cancel them and set what was equal to the logs equal to each other and just solve. When you're just giving one log, you want to isolate the log so that we can actually turn it into an exponential. Just like when we had an exponential, we isolated it to solve for a log. So first thing I want to do is subtract three. So I get five log six, uh, seven W plus one equals 10. Then I want to divide by five. So then I get log base six of seven W plus one equals two. Now that it's in this form, now I can convert it into an exponential. So this would just be six squared equals seven W plus one. Now I have a regular linear equation that I can solve. So six squared is 36. I'd want to subtract one first. So it gives me 35 equals seven W and then I'll divide by seven. So then I get five equals W. You still got to check whatever answer you get, plug it back in to make sure it is greater than zero inside the logarithm. And we see that seven times five is 35 plus one is 36, definitely greater than zero. So W equals five would be the answer. All right, let's try to make it harder. In this example, we have log Q minus six equals 3.5. All right. In this situation here, logs already isolated, so I can go straight into an exponential. But don't forget that the log's not written. There's an imaginary 10 right there. So this would be written as 10 raised to the 3.5 equals Q minus 6. Um, I actually don't know what 10 to the 3.5 is, so you would just type that into the calculator. Um, so then I would just add six to that result. So on a test, if you gave me this as your answer, I'd probably accept it. Since we don't know what that is by heart, but you can always type this in the calculator, get a decimal. According to the book, this is approximately 3,168.28. But again, I'd accept this as well. All right, let's look at a little bit harder one. In this example, we have log base two of X equals four minus log base two of X minus six. Hmm. All right. When you have a situation where you have multiple logs and you can't isolate each one of them, just get all the logs to one side. So I'll go ahead and I will subtract log base two of X minus six by adding it over. So then I get log base two of X plus log base two of X minus six equals four. Now that you've actually watched the 7.4 video, uh, we can condense these logarithms. So since adding means to multiply, I can write log one time. So log base two of X times X minus six. 
And then once it's just one logarithm that's isolated, now I can turn that into an exponential. So this will be two raised to the fourth equals x times x minus six. And then we just solve it. Two to the fourth is two, four, eight, 16. Distribute this, you get x squared minus six x. I know this is now quadratic, so I need to set this equal to zero. And then this is where you factor. So a trinomial we now know factors into two binomials where the leading term will be x. The only game to the math we got to figure out is what two numbers multiply to negative 16 but add up to negative 6. Hopefully you came up with negative 8 and positive 2. That multiplies to negative 16 and adds negative 6. When we set those equal to each other, I get x equals 8 and x equals negative 2. But we need to check it. So I'm going to come back over here. x equals 8. 8 minus 6 is 2. That works out. If I plug in negative 2 and for x, I get a negative 2. So therefore, that one does not work out because it has to be, when I plug it in, it has to be greater than 0. All righty. Let's do one more. All right. Let's look at natural log of x plus natural log of x minus 3 equals the natural log of 5x minus 7. So if you have multiple logs in a situation, just make it to where there's one log on each side. So here I can see I can condense this by using the same property rules. Addition means multiplication. So this becomes natural log of x times x minus 3, and then just leave this alone. And then using what we saw on yesterday's one example I was able to do, since I have just one single log on both sides, those basically go away and I can set what's inside equal to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute that to get x squared minus three x equals five x minus seven. And then I see that it's a quadratic, so I need to set this equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract five x, add seven. That all goes to zero. So this becomes negative 8x plus 7. Then we just factor. So we now know a quadratic factors into two binomials, where the leading term will be x. All we got to do mathematically is figure out two numbers that multiply to 7 but add up to negative 8. And hopefully you're screaming going it's negative 1 and negative 7, because that right there multiplies to a positive 7 but adds up to a negative 8. And when we set each one of these equal to 0, you should get x equals 1 and x equals seven. Just gotta test it. One works, one minus three is negative two, so one does not work. Plug in seven, seven works. Seven minus three is four, that works. Five times seven is 35, minus seven is still a positive number. So x equals seven is the only answer there. All righty. There's only one type of word problem that these really focus on, and it has to do with uh, a pert and uh, a equals p times one plus r raised over the n raised to the n t, uh, which you saw in the previous unit. All right, so again, in objective three, we're going to use exponential and logarithmic equations in applications. Couple reminders. We have the equations a pert, which is a equals p times e raised to the rt. This is used if the function says it is continuous. And then we also have the equation A equals P 
times one plus R over N raised to the N T. And this one is if it tells us it's yearly, uh, semi-annually, um, quarterly, monthly, daily, uh, all those things where we would actually plug in in as how many times it happens in a year. So you could say this is a non-continuous. All right, so let's look at an example. So here we go. It says 20,000 is invested at 3.5% interest compounded monthly how long will it take for the investment to double. We're going to round to the nearest tenth of a year. All right, so because it says month, oh. Wrong icon. There we go. Since it says monthly, that tells me it's a non-continuous. So I'll use this equation. So I'm going to plug in everything I know to figure out what I need to know. Um, it says I'm trying to determine how long it will take for it, the money to double. And if I'm putting in 20000 double of that would be 40000 So my total amount, which is A, I know needs to be 40,000. My P, which is my principal amount, my starting amount is just 20,000 times one plus my rate is 3.5%, but you have to turn that into a decimal by moving the decimal two places to the left. So I get 0 0.035. My N, uh, because it says monthly, that means it happens 12 times in a year since there's 12 months in a year. So I'll put 12 for my N raised to the N, which is 12, times T for time. So I'm trying to determine how long it will take. All right, so we're just going to try to isolate this and clean it up as best as we can. First thing I want to do is divide by 20,000. And that guy right there ends up just being two. And then I'm going to figure out what this is. So let's see. Let me get a handy dandy calculator out here. Point zero three five divided by twelve gives us a pretty long decimal. Plus one gives us something like this. 1.00291667 raised to the 12 T. And then now that this is an exponential form, I want to convert this into a logarithm in hopes that I'm able to uh, solve this. All right, so this right here would just be log base of whatever this number would be, so 1.00291667 um, of 2 equals 12t. All right, now, we might not be able to plug this into the calculator, but we can use the change of base formula from the previous example, and I can say this is log 2 divided by log of this big number, 1.00291667. And then I still have this 12, so I have to divide this number by 12. So whatever this is divided by 12 would give me my number. So you would do this work first, take that answer, divide it by 12, 
and you should approximately get about 19.8 years. All right. Other than that, that is all that you're going to be required to do. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me so I can help you out. Uh, 4.5 is open and due Thursday. We have a test on Thursday. But we will review tomorrow. Y'all enjoy y'all's day.